Mapel lies along the Volta Lake in the North Tung district of the Volta region. It has a population of approximately 50,000 inhabitants living in and outside of the community. Mapel here is a very populated community, but most of them, I can say 60% of them are seeking greener pastures elsewhere. It's only 40% that are here. Due to lack of industry and employment, most of Mipez citizens move to urban cities to find jobs. Mali migrated from Mipez to Circle, a commercial hub located right in the heart of Accra, the capital city of Ghana. I came to Accra, let's say, 2006. My first horse lay. I joined a group where we load the cargo, they call it Sony Cargo, we load it, uh, they take it from Ghana to Lagos. That's where I started the horse and then later I stopped and I joined a company we work as Pinted Road, Four Wheel Limited. After then the horse is still going on. I joined construction company to work over the pistol, the horse lay. It's not enough, we can't get anything. So I still join other company and I work a lot, but still, not better. Their main source of income is generated from fishing in the Volta Lake and also farming. Farming and fishing activity is the main occupation or major occupation of the people of town. But today, we are not seeing it. And then most of our people they run to Afran places to seek for greener pastures because fishing activities and farming activities are no more active as expected. Over 60 years ago, the river was their birthright in the area of employment coupled with farming until the construction of the hydroelectric power dam at Akosumbo. Today, we can't get it as much as it, it was in those days simply because of uh, the building of uh, the Akosombo Dam. There is a, a considerable problem here. The fisher folks have not been getting that which is expected, simply because there is aquatic which has taken over in the river. And then also, there were water heights in, in the river. And when it comes to erosion, some, somehow, it causes problem to the river. And you can see that there is mud in the river now. In those days, we don't have mud in the, 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 the river. The river is not muddy. It's pure sand, let me see. But today, that is what we are experiencing. And then some small, small snails that give us uh, uh, Belhazia and other, and other related sicknesses when it comes to river. Formerly, there was a bound that when you go to fishing, there was a bound out of fish in this river. But it's, the problem now is because of the construction of Akosombo Dam and Akuse. Before them, there was uh, even uh, an industry, we call it in our local language, Adodi. Oh, Afali. The botanical name is a uh, Egria radiator. But it's because of the construction of the dam. All those things are six. This all important national asset brought with it the ravaging effect of construction works. In the period of about a decade, the riverbed got covered with silt deposits, and this resulted in the gradual extinction of the Fiona and Flora. It also gave birth to river weeds making fishing activities almost impossible. In the course of building the Akosombo Dam, from Togome down to Azizanya, at least the 15 communities at the lower Vuta Basin are greatly affected. 
And then what are we saying? Our women can no more go into the river to pick extra. Esther is no more there because Esther don't feed on mud, but rather they feed on sand. That is the experience we are having today. Chuchu be my be a jar of the Keje as you parry beton kabahu. He be an echo baby and echo van echo be a jack a jar than a bachan a be a the absence of an industry has taken a hard toll on the citizens, especially the youth. A fraction of them got fortunate, working in sand pits, while others in the male fraternity opted for commercial transportation duties like motorbiking, popularly called Okada. Philip rides an Okada he bought for money he raised working in the sand pit. I have a lot of work to do. But now the system had. I'm dressing, undertaking, at the same time a driver. I'm a uh, Ghanaian moving at a uh, airway. Yeah, at the same time, I do a lot of work here. Yeah. But the system hard. That's why now I take Okada, it's my work that's undertaking. And their female counterparts are engaged in various artisanal works like tailoring and beautification skills. Normally the youth die are in the town always or show around without doing anything. So I decided to learn fashion and design. Starting it was very difficult for me, but later I noticed you have to do something for yourself before someone can help you out. So I decided to enter into it. No matter what I face, I'm ready to go into it. Some individuals have taken it upon themselves to engage the youth in activities that will keep them busy. I'm Jonathan Kwame Jidula Boja. Yeah. Uh, I'm a teacher by profession. Mm -hmm. I teach at Presby Junior High School. My friend. I, I happen to be a coach. I have a license. Mine's a D coach, that is from the CAF. So I'm here managing the division two club in the town. Some have that vision. Their ambition is to become professional footballers. But because they don't have anybody to help them, we are here to help them. The little we can do, we are here to help them so that their that dream can come into reality. The Queen Mother of the community organizes private class sessions for children between the ages of five to fourteen to help them improve academically. We have the reading club on Saturday mornings just to get them to read more. Reading is a good way of learning and prompts you to understand everything else that you see around you. It's also a method of uh, trying to keep uh, childhood and uh, teenage delinquency. Yeah, so they come here, we talk to them, we engage them, and they are getting better by the day. Clap for it. The river is considerably polluted by waste from industries upstream, coupled with the advent of sand winning activities, rendering usage of the river almost impossible. Sand winning is causing a whole lot of problems. One problem is the oil that they use to run the machine is taking over the river. So to drain this river or to say that we have to do it as an irrigation for farming, it will cause a whole lot of, it will, we don't know the side effect that it will bring. You see down here, you see these heavy vehicles collecting sand up and down, very heavy, more than 20, you can count them a day. Starting in the morning to the evening. So the danger is that if you are not very careful and we are after money today, 
tomorrow, our motherland, or our town maybe can be eroded if 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 should be any disaster. So the technology that they are even using to uh, collect the uh, to uh, to win the sand pollutes the water, and uh, most of the people also rely on the river water for drinking, for washing, and for cooking. Reasonably, pipe water terminals at various sites of the community were provided by the Ghana Water Company. Since the river, the main source of water is now heavily polluted. One main adverse effect of the absence of industry in the youth bracket is waywardness among the males and teenage pregnancy among the females. Out of 10 pupils, three are likely to drop out of school due to promiscuity at a budding age. Parents are less concerned about education, so they don't put much effort in their world's education. So by so doing, the kids, the children also don't know much and they don't know what the future holds for them after their education, so they don't attach much interest to their education and it's making the educational standard of murder falling. Older members living in the community have absolutely no means of earning income to cater for their wards in schools, and the girl child is victimized by youngsters who are not cut for fatherhood. Oh, and you all, uh, you don't go here, you don't want to see. Me have a toilet in your body, you're fine. A long lemon, a funny lemon, a calm your alley, a don't you marry. And you're like yelling up, I'm a lemon long fish for do it. But a dodgy little dog fine. Say, you're about to be over naming a boy, she who get no who shall I eat the allegation and no longer. Leticia, his daughter, is 18 years old and four months pregnant. In situations like this, girls find it difficult to pay for hospital checkups. So when they don't get help, what happens mostly is they become defaulters. They don't come to the clinic as often as they are supposed to due to their financial constraint. And other instances too, they try to abort their pregnancy on their own because looking at it, if they are not able to cater for themselves, they become anemic, they become malnourished, and most often they even end up in the facility in a bad state because you, you, their pregnancy wasn't monitored as it should. You know, as a pregnant woman, you visit the antenatal on a monthly basis, then as the pregnancy progresses, you visit on two weeks basis, then when you are near them, you come weekly so that the midwife or your birth attendant or the doctor who is taking care of you can have a closer view of you and the baby. But these people, because of the lack of money, they are not able to come forth as they are supposed to. 
and tracking them sometimes to it's a little challenge because they live in the villages. Like Leticia, other teenage girls in the community have fallen victim to early motherhood. There's no job in town that is also helping making it impossible for them to take proper care of them uh, themselves and their children because if they can't do any work and gain anything out of the work they are there and when the kids demand something and they can't provide they also live their way and do whatever they like and the girls any man that comes their way oh come for one city come for two cities they go in for it and that also is pushing them into these teenage pregnancy issues what we do is we have a monthly program on uh, pregnancy to educate the girls and their mothers even their fathers uh, so far, it's not caught on too well. We are still working on it. We're on a break now. Traditional authority is neck deep in this predicament and willfully taking steps to curb this menace. I have the opportunity to be going to stakeholder conferences with the VRA. And they, they told us that they are coming to dredge the river water to bring back fish, to clear the, I mean, the mud, for the sun to appear, for fishing activities to come back. That is what is happening now. And they even, they even started the, the dredging already. And our expectations are that they will do it and the river will bounce back to its normal for effective uh, fishing I mean, activities. They, in their pleas, opt for the restoration of the river back to its normal state where they envision adequate avenues of employment for the youth. We came up with a paper um, asking the government to establish the lower voter authority so that uh, we can manage uh, the voter, the lower uh, voter, uh, the simple way, so that we can generate jobs. The dredging will generate some jobs, but not so much. We are told, and uh, when the weeds are taken from the river and deposited on the land, we will be taught how to make fertilizer from them. We also be taught how to make biogas for cooking. We are even informed that uh, they will take a technology and we can produce mushrooms maybe for export and all that. Mapet is loved by its citizens immensely and an industry purposely targeted at its main source of livelihood, which are fishing and farming, will be wrapped in a warm embrace by all and sundry.